crafting journey here, that journey chick over on Instagram. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. And hey, hit the like button on your way in or out of the program today. He is coming to work with me because we're expecting a snowstorm while I'm at work. That way he can shovel me home. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to have him stand in front of the car and shovel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> you're, you're done. <laughs> you, you're shoveling. I'm not. I'm not dressed to shovel. I'm going to wear my heavy coat because even though it's really cold outside, they put the heater on at work and it gets really warm. <laughs> so yeah, I learned that several years ago. Coming from Florida, I did not know this. When it was a winter day, I would dress up in all my winter clothing, you know, and then I'd get to work and everybody's like half naked because the heat's on. I'm like, wait. And then I would sweat all day, you know. I'm like, so I learned, okay, dress normal for work. So I am dressed normally, pants, shirt, but then I'll put a list, some layers on top of it. Look what I got a new microphone. Oh, cheers. Where's the cheers? Cheers. Where's my cheers? Oh my gosh. There you, oh, thank you, like button. You rescued me. I didn't know where the cheers were. Anyway, pink. Who could resist pink? I just hope it's working well. Yesterday, sorry about the sound yesterday. Oh, gosh, I'm talking 100 miles an hour. Let me slow things down a bit. I, um, wow, what an evening. Yeah, difficulty falling asleep. I was up really, really late uh, watching just like, you know, Dr. Pimple Popper. My sister's like, how can you watch that? I'm like eating cookies, watching her pop pimples. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> it gets my mind off of life. <laughs> I'm just going to eat some cookies and watch pimple popping. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> let's get the planner out. Also, please consider subscribing if you enjoy the content of the channel. And if you're already a subscriber, please consider becoming a member or a Patreon to the channel. Details are down below in the description box down underneath where all that writing is. You just have to scroll down a little bit. Sometimes you have to hit that button that says read more. Yeah, because I have a lot of stuff in there. Anyway. Okay. No doctor's appointments this week. Yay. Do we have cheers? Where's this cheers on here? Hold on. Let me find it. There we go. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no. We're going to do pink today. Pink. No doctor's appointments this week. All right, so last night I did calming mandalas on Craft With Me Wednesday. It ended up being one, co they're supposed to be like little coasters. And mine, because I used <laughs> I used a four weight yarn instead of a three weight and a four hook instead of a three and a half, my mandala came out a little larger. So I'm calling it a mini doily. Check out that video here. It's in the eye. Um, just click on it. Save it for to your watch later list and then come back here and watch me because you don't want to miss what I have to say a bit today about crafting and crime. The nurses testified. Finally, we get to hear what the nurses say. All right. So today is National Take Your Lunch to Work Day. Take your, guess who's not, your lunch to work. I could. I'm just being lazy. Yeah. And in this day in history, we're going to talk about a French mine that blew up. Yep. French mine. I would not want to be a mine worker. No, no, no. Okay. I've done no outside filming. I did put up an unboxing on, I, yeah, I did an unboxing Monday night, Tuesday night. Tuesday, I don't remember, Monday or Tuesday night. That was my uh, Randall Spangler. Randall Spangler. Some Enchanted Evening. Some Enchanted Evening. Which, you know, I was saying that song was from Cinderella. It's not. You know where that song is from? South Pacific. Do you remember that movie? 
Oh, I loved it. Oh my God. It was a war movie, but it had this romantic story of the soldier that falls in love with the, the, you know, the island girl and, you know, and he sings some enchanted evening when you find your true love. Yeah, that's where that song came from. But it had nothing to do with a Victorian house or fairies. But I loved the diamond painting anyway. Thank you, Diamond Art Club. Okay. Uh, nothing going on in bill paying here. Yeah. Oh, you want to see what I got? I, uh, in addition to the new microphone, this was a total indulgence, I got to say, because I wasn't going to buy a new microphone, just a little piece that I needed, um, which I did get, and it did fix the volume thing. But I saw pink, and I'm like, oh, oh, I got to have it. So I have another pink thing. I have been carrying around a Vera Bradley backpack for a couple of years now, and it just really does um, put a lot of, it's, it's very heavy. Even without stuff in it, it's heavy. So I ordered this. I saw this, <laughs> Amazon, you know, also recommended for you. Well, this was it. They, they got me with the pink. So this is a handcrafted bag. Oh my God, look at it. And it already has, it's, it's already got my laptop in it for work, my file folders. Um, I could put my lunch in here. That might be put me over the edge weight wise. But look at these little tassels that it comes with. And I don't know if you can see, but let, this is like real patchwork. It's all handmade. They just take the little strips of fabric. No two purses are alike. And it was only like 30 some dollars. Now, I'm not trying to sell purses. Uh, I'm not in the business of selling purses. I just fell in love with it. I thought you guys would want to see it. Let me show you the other side because it's all different. You just kind of pick the color scheme that you want. So, of course, I picked hot pink. They have others. You can pick dark blue and, you know, other ones. But look how, and you can't, you can't really appreciate it because of the camera, but the, of the heavy embroidery that's going on here. It's just amazing. So beautiful. And it's all put together by hand. It's dry clean only. And the whole inside is this, um, Oh my God, I'm, I'm going overboard here. Is this hot pink? Yeah, with pockets and zippers and, oh, look. Look how amazing I look with my pink purse. Yeah, anyway, and it's not as heavy as that do gosh darn backpack. So, I you know, that's one of those things that I had in my cart. And I was hemming and hawing, and I'm like, eh, do I really want it? Do I really want it? And it just so happens that the microphone was in the, in the same cart. Do I really want it? You know, and finally I said, you know, I'm getting a tax return. Boop, hit the button. Next thing you know, it's on my doorstep. And I love the way Amazon now tells you how far away from your house they are. We are seven stops away. I'm like, ooh, and you look at the map and you can see the little vehicle moving towards your house. And you're waiting at the door when they get one or two stops away. And you're telling the dog, like, don't eat him, don't eat him. Yeah. I know, crazy. <laughs> Yes, and um, I worked a little bit more on this painting. We, we're we getting there. It's There's very little left, but, you know. Uh, so after Craft With Me Wednesday last night, I didn't work on it, you know, because it wasn't on the desk, and I had all my other, my crochet on the desk. So I didn't move this back to the desk till this morning, so I did not work on it last night. I should have. I needed some anxiety, anxiety, anxiety relief, Anx anxiety relief, which diamond painting does, and I wasn't doing it. Instead, I'm watching freaking Dr. Pimple Popper. Yeah. <laughs> raise your hand. Come on. Do you watch it? Come on, raise your hand. Uh, higher. Come on. Admit you do. Okay, see? And I get those shorts where they're popping pimples. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, that's a good one. I got to see that one. Ooh, 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 ooh. There's one on the floor. What, what body part is that? Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I know. 
I'm so, that's the nurse in me coming out. You know, we we love us some pimples. Yeah. Anyway, so yesterday we heard from. Oh, what am, what are we talking about now? We take your lunch to work day. So yesterday, I told you it was National Let It Go Day. So. But then I didn't talk about it because there was something I needed to let go and I wasn't ready to do it. But about five hours later, maybe six, I was ready to do it. I And I let it go. Um, I'm not going to discuss what it was because I don't discuss drama on my channel. But I let it go and I feel so much better. Oh, my God. So I'm just going to go, I'm just going to backtrack to, to yesterday, let it go day. This is a day, like if you have a relationship that you need to get out of, uh, you know, whether it's personal or business or, you know, you, there's something you've been procrastinating about. This is a day to just let it go. Something's been on your mind and it's just weighing on you. Let it go. And when you do, it's like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders and you feel so much better. So if there's something that's been bothering you, pick up the phone, talk to somebody about it and then, or write about it or start your own YouTube channel and talk about it, but let it go. Just put it out there into the universe and get it away from you. Put it, get it away. Gone, gone. I want to read something that someone sent me, and it meant so much. And, I, you know, I I love when people send me these things because it really shows that they care. So this one says, let yourself rest. If you're exhausted, rest. If you don't feel like starting a new project, don't. If you don't feel the urge to make something new, just rest in the beauty of the old, the familiar, the known. If you don't feel like talking, stay silent. If you're fed up with the news, turn it off. If you want to postpone something until tomorrow, do it. You don't have to do it today. Postpone it. If your house is dirty, nobody's going to know if you wait a day to clean it. Don't do it if you don't feel like it. Yeah. Feel the fullness of the emptiness the vastness of the silence, the sheer life in your unproductive moments. Time does not always need to be filled. You are enough simply in being. So for the rest of the show, we're just going to sit here and be. Nah, I'm just kidding. Um, but I like this saying. Yeah, I like that. And that was uh, by Jeff Foster. He's the person that originated that little I don't know what you, it's not it's not it's not, it's not poetry is it I mean it could be I don't know I didn't take poetry class so I don't know but so today is take your lunch to work day completely different topic and the, and when you do this you're likely to have a healthier lunch you're able to put in some protein some dairy some vegetables if you and you and you're able to control the portions and the cost so it makes total sense to do it so why don't i do it cuz some days i want that cheeseburger that they're serving down in the cafeteria um i want it and then most of the times i end up not getting it i'll go buy a turkey and cheese sandwich i know they have my my hospital makes the best turkey and cheese sandwiches they're just like plain um, country white bread with turkey and cheese and mayonnaise. Just that's that's it. Just plain, and I just love it. Oh, don't ask me why. And then sometimes I'll buy this protein pack. It has an egg and some peanut butter and some celery and some nuts, which is a terrific lunch. It it it. Believe it or not, you um, and it's you know for those of us who eat at our desk, uh. It's super easy to eat that at your desk and you feel full until dinner. Yeah. But anyway, take consider taking your lunch to work day. Now, I have yogurt in the refrigerator. I have bananas. Uh, I know I should. Okay. I'll, all right. I'll take my lunch to work. Okay. I'm going to take my lunch to work. Okay. All right. Let's talk about Crafting and crime daily. Woohoo! All right, 
finally, in the case of Dr. William Husel, we get to hear from the nurses. Yay. This is the case of a doctor who was accused of murdering 14 patients. Now, originally, he was charged with murdering 25 of his patients. And while the investigation was going, there was as many as 35 that were suspected that he had assisted people to their death. Yes, uh, by giving them a huge, I'm saying huge, like enough to kill an elephant, huge doses of narcotics and benzodiazepines. Uh, yeah, so, and the nurses are the ones that administered it. He would give the order, the nurses would administer it. The pharmacists just ignored it because the nurses would get the medication out of a machine called the Pixis machine. They would override it. Um, I'm not going to tell you how they did that because, frankly, I don't remember. There is a way. But they would override the system and uh, they would take out the medication before the pharmacist even <laughs> knew that the order had been entered. Sometimes the order hadn't been entered. Sometimes they were just taking a verbal order from a doctor. Now, I don't know about Kansas, because I don't practice law here, uh, nor do I do nursing. I, I do something completely different in healthcare. But I know in my past experience, taking a verbal order from a doctor is not allowed. You are not allowed to take a verbal order unless it's an emergency and the doctor is right there at the bedside. Then you can take a verbal order. Now, I think some of these nurses considered what they were doing an emergency. I would beg to differ. I think the jury's going to beg to differ. The State Board of Nursing begged to differ. So here, the first one that was on the stand was Troy Redman. Now, Troy no longer works in healthcare. Big surprise, which is... It's sad because at the time he was, you know, this young, enthusiastic nurse. He had go, gone to the Mount Carmel School of Nursing, as did the other two that testified yesterday. And uh, he ended up working in neuro ICU up until the point where the hospital decided we're going to combine all of our ICUs into one. They had a med surge, they had a cardiac, and they had a neuro. But they said, we're going to put it all into one and all all the nurses can do all the disciplines. So he he had to learn, you know, the ICU for the for the cardiac as well as the med surge. So, but he did. And then what he did was he became a rapid response nurse. Now, rapid response is an interesting concept. This is meant to keep people out of the ICU. So what happens is and it's also an initiative to get nurses to speak up. Uh, if you're a regular nurse on a regular floor and you feel like there's just something not right with my patient, you know, maybe it's a vital sign that's not right. And, you know, typically what you do is you go over to the nurse's station, you look up the doctor's phone, you call the doctor and you wait, you get his answering service and they say, we'll have him call you back. And, you know, two hours later, the doctor calls you back and you, and you, you tell them about your intuition and that, you know, something's not right with your patient. Meanwhile, your patient has coded. <laughs> so, Instead, when nurses have these intuitions or or these things that are just off and they they feel like, you know, this is something someone needs to be aware of, they call a rapid response. And this nurse or a team, generally it's supposed to be a team, but so this nurse may have been part of a team, but anyway, his job was rapid response. So he would go to where these patients were. He would talk to the nurse find out, you know, why she felt this way. He would assess the patient, you know, because he's got a higher level of knowledge about, than the regular floor nurse. He would assess the patient, and then he himself would call the doctor, not the answering service, the doctor, and say, I think your patient needs blah, 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 or I think, you know, we need to watch your patient in a closer setting or maybe the ICU or, you know, or 
he, or maybe they just need to calm the nurse down and say, hey, you know, I think everything's okay, you know, but here's what you need to watch for, you know, things like that. So this is what this nurse was doing. He was doing rapid response, but he was doing it on the night shift and he was the only nurse in the hospital that did the rapid response. So at any time, if he was in one area, he could get called away to another area because he also responded to codes. I need something to drink. Oh my goodness. So he started his career in August of 2014. He ended his career on July of 2019 when we know, we now know what happened in July of 2019. This company cleaned house. He was terminated. So he ended up leaving the medical field. He did not say what he does now, but uh, he was, all these, all three of the nurses that I'm going to talk about were, um, reported to the Board of Nursing. They all were investigated by the Board of Nursing and they all received suspensions by the Board of Nursing. They had, uh, part of the suspension was that they took a certain amount of time off from nursing, in, you know, increments of six months to a year. We really didn't find out on all of these, but, um, and during which time they would have to take courses and um, remedial things. And then if they did all that, they could keep their license. And they did keep their license, at least two or the three. Now this Troy Rudman, I'm not sure if he kept his license. Um, and at the time that all this is going on, he's studying to become a nurse practitioner. And I think he probably just dropped it all together. I think this traumatized all three of those nurses. Um, and I'm not defending these nurses because what they did was wrong. Um, I totally agree with the Board of Nursing. They needed a little bit more education. Yeah. So his definition of an emergency, Troy Rudman's, was where, uh, where waiting any amount of time would cause harm to the patient. So he felt like not administering these medications for palliative extubation would cause harm to the patient, even though this patient that he gave the, gave the medication to uh, Ryan Hayes, they had been talking about doing palliative extubation all day. They were just waiting for the family. So how is this all of a sudden an emergency? Because now the family's there. I don't know. Seems like they, when they were planning it earlier in the day, the doctor could have put in the orders for the extubation, for the medications to be ready. Uh, the pharmacist could have filled the order. It would have been there. The pharmacist would have checked the dosages. The right dosages would have been there um, when the family got there. And it wouldn't be an emergency. So instead, the nurse taking care of Robert Hayes that night, he's all flustered. Oh, my God. Because now he's got Robert Hayes as a patient. The family's there. They're waiting for this palliative extubation of Robert Hayes. Meanwhile, he's got another patient coming from the ED who's in a full arrest. So he and Dr. Husel need to get over to this other patient. So he calls Troy Rudman, the rapid response nurse, and he said, hey, can you handle this palliative extubation for me? So according to Troy, he responds to the Pixis machine. He gets there, Dr. Husel's at the Pixis machine, the other nurse is at the Pixis machine, and um, he had already, the other nurse had already started taking out medications, so he gets a brief report on the patient from uh, the other nurse, the doctor, he hears the doctor's order for a thousand micrograms of fentanyl, 10 milligrams of Versed, and 10 milligrams of Dilaudid, which you have heard me say over and over again is a ginormous amount of medication. Now, we do know from past testimony that Robert Hayes was there because of a drug overdose. So I suspect that Dr. Husel thought he was, um, it would take more to have an effect on him. So so this nurse says, okay, I got this. I'll finish taking, I'll finish doing the overrides on the Pixis. I'll get the rest of the medication out. You two go take care of the code patient. So Dr. Husel and the nurse leave. He finishes getting all the medication out. He goes, administers the medication, takes the guy off the ventilator. The guy dies. Um, well, he doesn't die right away. Takes the guy off the ventilator. The family's there. Now...
When he goes to administer the drug, he enters a pain score of 10. So one of the things that as a nurse you have to do when you administer a medication, you have to give a pain score. And then 15 minutes later, you need to come back and reassess the patient. What level of pain is he in now? And you have to put another pain score. Was the medication effective? Um, so... He didn't look at the chart where the prior two days, the nurses had been charting pain score zero, 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 zero for two days. Now all of a sudden he's at a 10. So he did admit on the stand that this was anticipatory. He anticipated that when he was going to take the tube out, that this guy would be in a lot of pain, um, air hunger, um, that kind of thing. He said he was taught in nursing school that the process of dying was painful and th therefore he was anticipating that this process this guy was going to go through was going to be very painful now i went to nursing school i was never taught this uh you know it totally depends on what you're dying from you know if you've got cancer and you're riddled with it all over your body and you're in pain that's one thing but we know from the from the prior scores, this man was not experiencing any pain. Um, and air hunger is not painful. It's uncomfortable, but I don't think it's painful. Anyway, so he admits he did not wait for the pharmacy approval. He just took the medications that were halfway already withdrawn, and uh, he goes and he administers them. So... He, he then goes, he's, you know, he's only there as a rapid response nurse. He gets called away. Um, the nurse that was taking care of the code patient, he comes back to check on his other patient, Robert. So he checks on Robert. Robert is, he says Robert looked blue. Um, he was, you know, gasping for breath. He looked very uncomfortable. So he goes to Dr. Husel. He reports this to him. And he does not because he takes a stand next. He says, his testimony is, I didn't know the rapid response nurse had administered all the medication. So I took out another thousand milligrams of fentanyl, 10 milligrams of Versed, and 10 milligrams of Dilaudid, and I administered it. What? Yeah, so 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes later, this Robert Hayes gets another huge round of medications yeah and then he passes away whoa 2000 of fentanyl 20 of versed and 20 of dilaudid and he said i had an order a verbal order from dr Hussel. well <sighs> wow just like i'm speechless no wonder they were suspended i mean wow uh, let me just see what else. So that second nurse, his name was Tyler Springer. Um, he did receive a one-year license suspension and was placed on two years probation with the Department of Nursing. So he's still practicing nursing, but in a different capacity. He's no longer an ICU nurse. He actually does not deal with patients at all, but he is, what he does requires a nursing license. Um, so he actually, um, because he was an ICU nurse, not, not a rapid response nurse, he was an ICU nurse. He, there was several of the the patients that were involved that he had himself had taken care of and had administered large doses of medication. Um, not just Robert Hayes that we just talked about, but Joanne Bellasani, Bellasari, James Allen. Um, yeah. And neither of these nurses ever question. They didn't question the doctor. Gee, doctor, that seems like an awful lot of medication here. You, you know, uh, they didn't call the pharmacy. Hey, I've got a doctor's order for this huge amount of medication. They didn't question it. Didn't cross their mind to question it, which is where the where one of the biggest failures was. If someone gave me, if a physician stood there and gave me that order, first of all, I'd look at him like, "Are you nuts? I'm not giving that." And it's exactly what I would say to him: "Are you nuts? I'm not giving that." <laughs> if you, if you can get a pharmacist to tell me that that's okay, 
then I'll give it. But otherwise, I'm not your gal. I'm not doing it. Uh, my, it is, let me tell you, getting a nursing license is not easy. It takes years of studying to get through nursing school, years of clinicals in the hospital, and then you have to take this god-awful test uh, that you have to study for months for, and and then not to, not to mention pay a lot of money to get the license, and then keep it up. You have to take all these classes every year to keep up your license. This is something that's very, very valuable. I would not put it at risk by doing some this nonsense. I really wouldn't. But here we go. Let's just back up a second. Let's back up. Does this amount to murder? Did what Dr. Husel did was this mur was he murdering these patients? Did did these huge doses of medication cause the death of these patients, aside from whatever they were suffering from already. You know, despite the fact that coming off that ventilator on a normal dosage, they probably would have died within the next day or two. Instead, they died within a few minutes. Was it because Dr. Husel had a busy ICU, codes coming in from the ED, and he just needed to get it over with? I don't know. So, uh, there was one more nurse. I did not write any notes about her. I was listening uh, while I was, uh, I was playing my game last night, you know, Arc survival evolved. Um, I was playing my game, flying my bird around the continent, listening to this other nurse, young woman. Um, now, she was smart. She did question this. She she had only had a few shifts in this ICU. She had been, uh, she worked in another area of the hospital, but they needed somebody to work the ICU. So she worked the ICU and she had done this a few times. So she said she would, you know, pick up shifts in the ICU. So she picked up a shift. This was probably her fifth or sixth shift in the ICU. And there was a palliative extubation. Now she had never done one. No experience with this. So she, Dr. Husel gives her this order for these large amount of uh, narcotics. And she says, hmm, hey, the light bulb went off in this woman's head. She's like, I've never done this before. It's, and so she goes to several other nurses who say, oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's the usual. It's, it's fine. You can go ahead. It's palliative. So she does. She overrides the system, and she does say that overrides were very, very common. It, it went on all day long. Doctors would give an order. You go in the system, you override, you get it, whatever you need, you get it. Um, which, you know, which is why the pharmacy is in trouble. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. But uh, so she did check. She did check. Even so, she administered the dosage. So she was in trouble with the Board of Nursing. She received a six-month suspension. Uh, I believe it was suspended. She had to take a course, and she kept her nursing license. And she still practices at Mount Carmel as a maternity nurse. You go, girl. Yeah. So uh, I thought that was interesting because she did question it but, and was told, hey, it's okay. But what she should have done is look it up. We all carry, when I was a nurse, we carried little drug books, you know, PDR, PDRs, PDRs. And then it became the fashion to have one on your phone. Hey, I've got the app. I've got a PDR app. Um, and now, right in the computer program of every terminal, uh, the computer system that the hospital has is a pharmacy, a, a PDR and you just press the button. And theirs was, I think, what called Linus. You just press it. You look up the drug. It tells you how the, the the max dosages, and uh, you're good to go. And you're we we were required when I was going through nursing school to look up every single drug. If we were not familiar with a drug, we were required to look up that drug in the PDR. Now, like I said, I'm ancient. Back then, we had a little book, but. You were required. None of these nurses did that.
Okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox on that one. <laughs> Let's talk about this day in history. In France, there was a mine explosion. Let me find it. In 1906, in, um, and I'm going to butcher this name, uh, uh, Cor Corsair, Cor Cor Corsaris, Corsaris, France, um, over a thousand mine workers were killed. Um, an underground fire sparked a massive explosion that virtually destroyed a vast maze, maze of mines. So the day before this explosion, a fire broke out in the mines. And they, the, the workers, they tried to contain it, but uh, they, they couldn't. So what they did was they, um, they got it limited to this one area. And then they sealed off this area, hoping that the fire would just die out from air hunger. What they did not anticipate was that the walls of the interior of this area was leaking gas into the fire. So by the time these workers come back the next morning, this happens about 7 a.m. the next morning. By the time they come back, they're, you know, now they're all in the mine. They, there's this ginormous explosion, like there were people, fire coming out of every entrance to this mine, every entrance. And uh, what they were mining here was coal for gas. And so there was fire everywhere in this mine shaft. There was no way you could go in and rescue people. A group of 40 people decided they were going to try to go down this um, tunnel, I guess. I don't know what they call it. They built, they formed a tunnel. As they're going down, the thing collapses. They all die. Uh, the, the explosion blew the roof off of buildings, killed people that were outside of the mine. So a, a total of over a thousand people were were perished during this explosion. It was horrible, horrible tragedy. And uh, needless to say, hundreds more suffered very, very severe burns. So a very another horrible mine disaster. I think I'm going to stay out of mines. <laughs> Anyway, that is the show for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please don't forget the like button. Like I said, he's going to work with me to protect me from the snow that's coming while I'm at work. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have a good day. I've just made up my mind. It's going to be a good day. Have we, you guys have a good day too. I love you all. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday.